Women who appeared to be armed and several associates stormed a bank in Lebanon on Wednesday, demanding $13,000 of her own money. That's according to a source with an advocacy group for bank customers. Lebanon's financial crisis has been ongoing for three years and is so bad that banks have locked many customers out of their savings. Much of the population is unable to pay for basic needs. The woman was identified by her mother as Sally Hafiz. Before going into hiding, Hafiz told Lebanese television that it was a toy gun and that she needed to access her money in order to finance her sister's cancer treatment. I have nothing more to lose. I got to the end of the road. Two days ago, I went to the branch manager and begged him, told him my sister is dying. She doesn't have time. After giving me a hard time, he finally said he can give us 200 US dollars a month at the rate of 12 million Lebanese pounds, which is not even the price of an injection that my sister needs to take daily. It is a shame to say this, but I got to a point where I was going to sell my kidney so that my sister could receive treatment. Because what is the point of my life if I see her dying in front of my eyes without me doing anything? A source at the advocacy group Depositors Outcry told Reuters that the group took responsibility for the incident at Blombank in Beirut Sadeco neighborhood. This isn't isolated. On the same day, a man in the city of Ali also held up a bank to withdraw his own funds before turning himself in to authorities, according to the advocacy group. Last month, a similar incident happened. Blom Bank confirmed in a statement that the hostage situation had ended but did not give further details. <laughs> Ooh. Shalom, shalom, Yashar Allah. We're going to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rahak, Kadash, Heli Hubatons, created names of the Heli Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Dope of Honor, to the Pops, the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you, sister, brothers, and neighbors, true, and Shalom to the brothers and the sisters listening and studying, show themselves approved. Shalom. Woo, you can just see from there, y'all, Shalom. That's one of the main things right there to get you mad. That, that'd get your blood boiling right there because. That's one of the worst things to have money. You know, you got money in an institution. They tell you to put your money at a bank. They're supposed to, you know, put your money at. You got money in there. You go to get your money and they tell you, well, we ain't got no money for you. You can't pull no money out. you like, man, you better you better get my money, man. What you mean I ain't got no money? And you looking on your piece of paper. You see you got money in there, but they won't let you withdraw it. That, that right there will make you hot. And you're just seeing that thing, Lebanon, you know. They're going bankrupt, which a lot of the small countries are going to go bankrupt, just like this country going to go bankrupt. And the first thing they're going to get hit, and you're going to see it, is there's going to be a lot of bank runs. The bank's going to say, I ain't got no money for you. That right there is going to start, start up a lot of uproar. That right there. As you see, Lebanon's going off a whole lot of uh, robberies. And really, can we really technically say that's a robbery? Because technically, she wanted her to take her own money. So really, I look like the bank robbed her. They won't give her her money that she worked hard for, her hard-earned money. They won't give it to her. So she went in there with that thing, like, y'all better give up my money. You know, my sister need treatment. You know, y'all better give it up. You know, because that's a very, very, you know, aggravating, vexing situation, which I've been in a situation kind of similar to that. I'm going to hey, quick testimony, y'all. Shrout a quick testimony. I'm banking, right? This is back in the day when I was younger. I'm banking with Bank of America. I know, Babylon, punk bank. So I'm banking with Bank of America, right? I get a, a $1,500 bonus check. I go in my bank to cash my bonus check, right? $1,500. And I was going to withdraw out $500. And I was going to spend on a couple items. You know, I already had in my head what I was going to do with it. So I goes in the bank. I never forget it, man. It was just like yesterday. I deposit the $1,500 into my bank. Give them the check, sign it over, deposit the money into the bank, cash the check, right? It was a Jake Teller, a dude. You know, I'll never forget this. I think he was Momo, too. So I, I deposit the check, and then I tell dude I want to withdraw 500 of it, you know, because I got some things I want to do. Dude tells me, due to a new policy, you cannot withdraw any money from that check until after 24 hours. I'm looking like... What you mean? Hey, look at me. I got rent to pay. You know, I need that money now. You know, I feel like that commercial. It's my money and I want it now. 
you know? And dude like, man, I'm sorry, sir, but due to new policy, you can't withdraw that money until after 24 hours. That had me hot, y'all, Sherrod. I'm looking like, how the hell are you going to withhold my money? I put my money here let you hold my money, which I know you're making money off of my money, and then you tell me I got to wait a certain period for me to get my own money? Man, that next day, y'all, Sherrod, I, I, I cashed out that <laughs> all that money, and I closed that account. I ain't banked with them cents. And now that that's going to be common as we move forward in prophecy. In the future time, these banks are going to start collapsing because the economic system is collapsing. And these banks really don't have cash in there like that. That's why, like, like now that I understand, like, bank runs and how banking works, now I know what the situation was. They was doing that because they didn't have the cash to give me at that time. Because these banks, they operate off a debt system. You know, basically, uh, Esau's whole economic system operates off a debt system. Because they don't know how to do business. And everything is at the point now to where it's about to break. It, it can't take it no more. All the usury, all, all the debt, the system is about to collapse. So you're going to watch a little video, a quick video to really explain bank runs and what happens. And, and why these banks go through what they go through. So let's watch this real quick. Where is it at? Yeah, we're going to watch that real quick so you can kind of understand how these banks operate. Because now I know how they operate. And they're, they're about to collapse, man. It's going to be a whole bunch of bank runs. They're going through that in China right now. Uh, a lot of bank runs. You see Lampinoff. A lot of Hispanic countries are going through a lot of bank runs. And it's going to hit Babylon the Great. And when it hit Babylon the Great, it's going to be bad. You see, she went in there, you know, stick up robbery. When it hit Babylon the Great, that right there, that, that's going to lead, that could lead to martial law. <laughs> you know, a lot of people go try to get their money out their account, and they can't. And the bank say, "I ain't got your money." Oh, ha, ha, ha. you already know, y'all, Shroud. You know how two third Jake is if he can't get his money. Anybody, you mess with their money, man, that's gonna be problems. <laughs> and, and he's all about to do it. So let's watch this little video. As mentioned in the fractional reserve banking video, only a fraction of the currency in existence is actually tangible, so paper money and coins. Let's assume that Bank A, like any other bank, has customers who trust it with their money for various reasons. Some create bank deposits, some simply keep some spending money in their bank accounts and so on. Me? These people are legally allowed to go to the bank and take their currency out in the form of paper money. The problem is that most of the currency banks manage doesn't exist physically. For the sake of our discussion, we'll assume 10% of the currency Bank A manages is tangible, and we'll also assume it actually keeps that paper money in a vault. If 2 out of 100 customers ask for physical money, the bank can handle it. But what if 20 out of 100 people do it? Naturally, the bank would become insolvent. It just doesn't have that much physical currency. To make matters worse, the depositors would panic and spread the word, causing a bank run which is kind of like an infection. As more people find out a bank is in trouble, they tell others, and this might make depositors stop trusting banks in general. Even seemingly healthy banks can be affected because, again, most of their money is not physical. Therefore, governments and central banks do their best to keep depositors at ease. In some places like the U.S. or the European Union, bank deposits are guaranteed up until a certain amount, but that is a topic for another video. So did you peep that? So this situation, this current economic forecast is going to lead to a lot of bank runs. People are going to pull their money out. They're already, the stock market has already been affected now. They're pulling out of investing in stocks because this, this whole thing is about to belly up. So let's go to the scriptures, man, because this is all prophesied to happen. It's all prophesied to happen. Let's go to, let's start off with, oh yeah, let, let's go to James. Five and one. Let's go to James five and one. And that's really like I feel like that's gonna start to kick off part of martial law when you know Esau collapses the the dollar. When the dollar crashes, that's gonna create worldwide panic, especially over here in Babylon the Great. So yeah, this James five and one says, Go to now, ye rich man, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments moth-eaten. So Esau's riches are corrupted because he got it by usury. He got it by stealing. He got it by bloodshed. 
You know, and Esau, what I found out is Esau's not a good businessman. Esau don't really know how to do business. Esau's just been balling off the backs and, and the bloodshed and the hard work of Yashrala all these years. You know, you do a, a, a thermal, a, a thorough examination of Esau and do your history and really examine him, you'll find out that Esau's not a good businessman. They're not really intelligent people like that. They just been doing good off of our people being enslavement to them, balling off them curses. That was in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And they, they got, you know, a lot of wealth built off of that, off the backs of Yashrala. And so now that, you know, we've got some type of free, we can get our own wages, and they don't have that free slave labor they used to, now you're starting to see that they don't have nothing to supplement their bad business practices. And then the elite Edomites, they get rich based off of usury, which brings a, a debt system, which is like only the, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And we're at a, a point now to where the system can't take that no more because it's a false balance. So now it's about to collapse because the people don't have the spending power to, you know, keep this system afloat. They can't keep services going. And see, the elite Edomites know that. And that's why they have that device ready to, to back. As soon as the, the dollar collapses, they're going to come with that digital dollar, which comes with that device, which is going to lead to, you know, uh, which is Revelation chapter 13 and 16, which leads to that. And, and that's how this thing is going to fold out. And you can see it happening. Like, we're at the point now where it's undeniable. And the first thing you're going to see when that happens, you're going to see bank runs. People are going to start pulling their cash out of these banks because they're going to start realizing these banks don't have the money. People are going to be losing money with these banks. So, and see, these banks make their money off of holding your money because they charge you interest. You know, they, they make money off of you putting money in there. And then they got everybody brainwashed, think you got to put your money in the bank. Now they damn near force you to use a banking system. Which is how you're going to try to do you when you use the digital system. Because you now, the order things online, because everything now is online and digital. You know, debit. You down in a bank account to get you a debit card or a credit card so you can buy online things. Because now everything, and then like a lot of jobs make you get a bank account. Like you have to be paid through the bank account. They don't, they don't give out paper checks no more. I notice a lot of new jobs don't do that anymore. I haven't had a job that's gave me a paper check in a minute. Now that I really think about it. It's all automated. You know, through, through the bank. That's so how they, they force you to mess with them. In a minute, they're about to belly up. And then when they belly up, it's just going to be it's gonna be straight chaos. And that's where we're at now. And like You can see it's going to happen because now it's starting with these little countries first. Because they're the ones in the most economic trouble. Because the Esau, you know, he presses everybody. And when I say Esau, the Edomites will talk about the white nation. You know, they're the ones ruling right now. They're the ones that are oppressing everybody. You know, don't really let nobody do what they want to do. They want to have a, they like, they like Karens. They always in somebody else's business, always trying to dictate what you do. And they don't do nothing right. So now you're seeing because these, these other countries, these other nations can't operate their country like they want to. And they got to use the U.S. currency, the dollar, which is really no good. Now they're starting to belly up because the dollar's bellying up. Because you got Russia... You got China, you got the BRICS nation that are no longer dealing with the U.S. currency. So the U.S. dollar is dying. And so these other countries and these other people are scrambling to try to supplement what they're going to do because the U.S. dollar is losing its power. And when that dollar really crashes, oh boy, they're going to fill it in Babylon. They're going to fill it in Babylon. Now. What I want to pull up is how why Esau's losing his kingdom, why everything's happening right now, why the kingdom has to go back to Yasharala and get out the devil's hands. It's because, like I said earlier, he doesn't do business right. He and it like to do business good, all he had to do was follow the scriptures, but he doesn't do it. Esau Edom, aka the white nation, they 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 contrary to everything in the book. And it's like whatever Yahweh say say do in the Bible, they do the opposite. And then now they up here looking crazy, wonder why they about to lose they they kingdom, you know their rulership because the world can't take them being in rulership anymore. The people can't take them being in rulership anymore. They had to come up out of there. And hey, call her Lord Yahweh Shad that he's creating all these scenarios to take this devil out of rulership. And then he's gonna go into slavery where he belongs. And then we're gonna be able to do business right. Everything's gonna flow right. 
Everything's going to circulate right. Can't do it because of this devil. So check this out. This is a rule he breaks. This is in the law too. This is Moses laying this out. So check this out, Yasharala. It's going to be real interesting to find out. This is Exodus 22 and 25. And it says, If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, there shall not be to him as a usurer, neither shall thou lay upon him usury. So basically like loaning somebody money and then charging them interest to pay back. That's usury. That creates a debt system. They keep somebody always behind and always in the hole. And you have a shot and set it up to be that way. Whatever you borrow, that's what you pay back. That makes sense. You know, I always used to think this as, as a young a young child, but I didn't have the, 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 the maturity and the knowledge yet to tell everybody, like, I don't think your system's running right. I don't think nothing's running right. But, you know, people that grew up in Babylon, this is how you do business. Because that's they learned it from Esau. And I'm like, Esau don't do business right. And now I got the scriptures and I got all the knowledge. I'm like, now I can point and prove how Esau does everything wrong. Esau runs everything off a debt system, especially those 1948ers. You know, those elite Edomites, they do everything based off usually a debt system. So that keeps everybody poor and it keeps them rich. And Yahweh said, don't do that. And what do they do? They do it. Just like a, a day's work supposed to be a day's wages. He don't do that. He holds it back so he can tax you. This devil always want to tax somebody. A whole lot of money, man. They don't do nothing right. So check it out. I got another precept to go with that one. So it tells you don't be doing uh, usually with the poor, man. You're supposed to give generously. Esau don't do that. Esau only give money to other rich people and then use it as a tax write-off. So he don't even pay taxes. That's another thing. Yashra that a lot of our people don't know. These elite Edomites, they don't pay taxes. Only people who pay taxes are the poor people in the middle class. These elite Edomites, they don't pay taxes. They do tax write-offs. They got tax loopholes. They don't pay taxes. They don't put back in. They just take, 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 take. And see, when you always taking and you never give back, it, it destroys whatever you're dealing with. Because all you do is take. You know, they're like a harlot, a hoe. Dealing with a man, they just take and give nothing back. And that's why today, like you have shall say, they're wicked. <laughs> and they do wicked least. So check it out. Let's go to Ezekiel 18 and 13. It's good. And it shows in their banking system. The banking system is totally off of usury. Totally off of usury. Everything they do. So check it out. This is Ezekiel 18 and 13. Have given forth upon usury and have taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He have done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Future prophecy happened to Esau. Even. Did you hear it? Read? Matter of fact, let me read that again. It says, you know, check it out. I'm going to start at 12. I'm going to start at 12. Let's go Ezekiel 18 and 12. Hath oppressed the poor and needy, has spoiled by violence, have not restored the pledge, and have lifted up his eyes to the idols, have committed abomination. 13. Have given forth upon usury and have taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He have done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. You see that? So that is a future prophecy to Esau Edom, man. His blood is about to be upon him because he has oppressed the poor. He has done usury. His whole system is based on usury. Esau done got rich off of usury. You know, and Yahvashah just declared right there that he should not live because that's a very wicked tactic. You're not supposed to do like that, man. That's, that's wickedness. You're not supposed to be. That's basically been a long shark. Esau ain't number the long shark. When you really think about it, Esau gave you a little bread, but you got to pay back, you know, 20%, 30% on what he gave you. When he doing that, and he want to catch you in that, that loophole. He wants you to uh, mortgage, put interest on that. Your car note, I put interest on that. Um, this anything you do, I'm putting interest on that. That way, you stay broke and I stay rich, and you'll never ever get to my level. I don't give a damn what you do. And then, like, to get to my level, you got to do some wickedness in my system, and then I'll decide to let you up on my level, you know, or, or be like Esau and do usury, and then you just like him. And it said right there, the blood should surely be on you. So, that's a form of wickedness that nobody talks about. Plans of Christianity don't even talk about that in these churches. And it's really showing now 
in their economic system. Like I said, we're about to see increased bank runs as the dollar has now collapsed because see, a lot of these heathens have got hip to the game. That's why Moab, which goes to your, your Chinese, the China, and, and the other Edomites, the Russian Edomites, and, and the, the BRICS nations, which goes into India, which is uh, Ishmael, uh, South Africa, Yahamites, you know, they're all... They're all in, uh, what's that, Brazil, you know, which that's Jake, but it's ran by, you know, heathen nations, heathen people. So they're all trying to, you know, cut out the dollar because they're tired of the usury. You know, Esau has put, the Babylon grounds put sanctions on people, which also goes into usury, debt. That way you can't come up. That's how they stay. They oppress everybody. That's really how they keep their power hold on everything because everything, you know, economics goes into power. You know, having, uh, they say money is defense. The scriptures say that. And um, Esau wants to make sure that you don't get any resources. You don't get to his level. So he's going to keep you oppressed. Now, the good news is that Yabashah about to bring so much ruckus, so much violence. You know, when them ICBM missiles go off, everything Esau's ever built is about to be destroyed. And then Yabashah is about to exalt us. And then we're going to be able to, you know, get the economic system back on point. We're going to have our own economics. We're going to have an Israelite's face on our money. And therefore, we'll do it correctly. And that's how Esau does it. You know, and I'm patiently waiting on that day. But to get back to the subject at hand, you can see they're about to collapse this dollar. It's not working no more. They did. See, a debt system is like sucking somebody's blood, like a vampire or like draining something. In a minute, it's going to get to the point where you tap it out. And then you, you know what you got to find a new source. You know you done sucked it all up. You know you got to find a new source. And then at the point now to where they done sucked everything up, and there is no more source. So now what this devil done did? He done went to the you know technology. He's going to make it a, a digital thing, a digital currency. You know something that don't even exist. You know it, it's in the uh, what they call that? Uh, the digital space. You know, up in the digital era, metaverse. Now it's some a uh, virtual reality. Now he's going totally artificial. <laughs> he gonna make some up. That way he ain't gotta print no physical money. He can just, you know, it's on, it's on the uh, on the web, the Internet of Things. It's on the there you go. That's the word I was looking for. Cyberspace. It's in cyberspace. That's what this devil is doing. You know, he's just making some up, like like the Matrix. He wanna link you in there. So he want you in the metaverse, spending digital dollars. And none of that is real and none of it exists. Because he's done sucked all the things that are real and tangible. He done used it up. So now this devil has to move to an alternative, you know, source. And like, man, thank you. How about y'all shot? He gonna, man, knock this devil down. Because we, we tired of this devil, man. We can't take no more of this. No, devil. You will not rule for another 100, 200 years. No, 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 no. You're going to be done now. Because we can't take it no more. And the bank runs is going to be the first sign and symptom of the economic system flush. You're already hearing signs. They're already saying uh, people falling behind on their bill. Inflation's going up. That's a sign that the, the system is circling the drain. Inflation's going up. These these companies like FedEx CEOs telling you like it's about to be bad. So with that being said, y'all sure all have been a good watchman. Get your money out these banks now. Get your money out of 401k. Get your, your, like, if you can draw your pension early, get that. Get all your money now. Get your physical money. Keep it on you. Don't keep it in these banks. Keep it on you. And spend your money while I still have some value on, like, off-grid things. Things you're going to need when the water go out, when the lights go out, when the gas go out. Things you're going to need, you know. Get those get those off-grid things. It's the best thing you can do with the last bit of Federal Reserve notes while it has value right now. Because it's about to go, all go useless anyway. And then you don't, ain't nothing worse than having some money in the bank. Say you got $50,000 in the bank. And when this, this stuff hit, because it's going to hit. It's going to hit, y'all, Charlotte. When it hits, you can't get that money out. You can't get access to it. So I'm giving advance warning now. Pull all your stuff out now. Even at the 401k, because that ain't nothing but usury anyway. I found the 401k ain't nothing but Esau making money off your money being in the stock market. All they do is take your money and put them in, in stocks. They're supposed to be guaranteed, which look like ain't nothing going to be guaranteed now, and, and make money off your money to give you a little percentage of it. That's all they're doing. So pull out. What they call that cash out when you're at the casino and the machine ain't winning no more? Cash out. <laughs> cash out, y'all. Hit the button. Pull all your money out. 
What they used to put, uh, old used to keep their money in the mattresses, get you some safes, uh, bury them, but keep your cash on you. That way, when you need to access your cash, you can. You ain't got to go to no bank and they tell you, oh, you can't get your money. We ain't got your money. You ain't got to hear that. You got your money. This I know it's risky, but it's better than not having been able to get it. Then I say, once you get your money, invest in off-grid things. Because you don't want to have $50,000 and then they crash the dollar and now it's nothing but paper. You know, it does you no good. Get things that you can barter. We're going to go to a barter system. Get you things that you can trade. So when the dollar crash, you're still good, you know, to a certain extent. You know, you can still uh, trade things. You can still, you know, make do. You know, you still have, you know, some wiggle room. But really, hey, only way you're going to make it through this is through the spirit and power of your high was shy. So really, the best thing to do is be in this truth. But uh, for us in this truth, you know, the best thing you can do to try to reserve my notes is, is turn them into things you can use. You know, resources, uh, off-grid, things you can trade and barter. That's the best thing you can do with that money right now. And then getting this truth, because this money is about to go. You, all the signs are there. All the signs are there. And it's about to increase. So I'm giving, uh, through the power and spirit, you have about I'm giving advance warning now. Get get your money out now. The bank's about to belly up. This whole system about to belly up. It's going to belly up, y'all, Sharala. Because too much usury. Too much bad business on Esau's part. And plus, his wisdom is gone. Yabashah's taking Esau's wisdom away. He's just making retarded moves and retarded moves. I say, when they took the dollar off the gold standard in the 1970s, that was a retarded move by Esau. I said, Esau being on, on, the, on the dumb thing, you know. Then they put the Federal Reserve in, in they, and they let the Federal Reserve in their in their country. That was really the death of their country. They, they gave it away right then and there. That's when the elites took over. And I want to say that was, what, 1913 or something like that? Esau still don't know that to this day. I be talking to some Edomites, older Edomites, and they don't even know that. And I'm like, boy, y'all stupid. That's why they can't be ruling no more. So I'm going to go back to James 5 and 3. And check it out. This James 5 and 3 says, Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Yea, have heap treasure together for the last days so check you hear that his silver and his gold is cankered that goes his economic system his dollar's done same thing as his silver and gold being cankered the dollar's done is it, it, no good <laughs> you know and it's a witness against him that's why all these countries are moving to another uh backup currency you know they're gonna use either the rupee or the digital yuan they're using another currency european union's doing bad by the grace doing bad the dollar's gone and it's a witness against Esau to show that he's not a good businessman. Like I said, they took that dollar off the silver and gold standard. That was dumb. That was a very dumb move. Then you let the Federal Reserve come in and charge debt to you to print off your own money. I look at Esau like, how you let that happen? How you let somebody come in and, and charge you to print off your own money as, as you as a country? Like, that's things that Yashua would never do. That shows Esau is a fool. He's a fool. <laughs> When I look at Esau, Esau's a fool. And I be looking at two-thirds like, y'all looking up to these dang fools, the basement, they stupid. Why would you want to tell yourself after this fool right here? Don't you know your people are the smartest people on the face of the planet? Yashar Allah, the 12 tribes of Israel. We the ones got the wisdom. We the ones with the intelligence, not these damn devils. And they don't really trip. They, they trip their own selves up in their system. They destroy their own selves. And see, Esau going to get mad and blame Jake for his mess-ups. You got to watch out. These, these Edomites, especially these, these everyday working lower class Edomites, they're going to get very upset when they don't have any cash to feed their family. And they're going to take it out on Jake because they already got a bloodlust for Jake. That's about to happen. So I just want to show right there, hey, the economic system is about to collapse. Pull your money out now. Cash out now. Look to rough it. Look to, you know, live off the land. Be in the sticks. Be in the woods. Look for things like that because there's no more to say. You better not be trying to get you a business set up, have a 10-year plan for a business, man. You're going to surely set yourself up for failure. This place is done. Like Esau cashing out. That's why the stock market is tanking as we speak now. You know this lesson now. The stock market is tanking. And it's going to get worse as World War III kicks up and gets worse. It's going to get worse. Especially in these countries decide like, 
no more U.S. dollars. We're not dealing with no more U.S. dollars. Man, the dollar is going to deplete. It's depleting now. And you're going to see it more bank runs. You're going to see bank runs in the, in the U.S. You're going to see that. You know, so. And, and the people can't take it no more. That's where everybody's about to go crazy. You know, because the system is messed up. So I want to get some. Where, where is that at? Dang, I don't know. I know it's some Proverbs. I'm going to leave off with that. I want to say 10 and 4, is it? That's crazy. I was say, okay, 11 and 4. I'm about to say, I say this all the time. Huh? I forget. You know, that's it. it's so bad. Thank God for the brotherhood. Because it's only precepts. It's hard to just keep track of this where they're yet. So check it out. This Proverbs 11 and 4. And it reads, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness deliver from death. You hear that? So the best thing to escape this coming catastrophe is being in this truth, putting in the work, and having the faith of your high by shower shot. Riches ain't going to make it. These little sellouts think they got about 50 million, 60 million put up. They're going to be in a little bunker. Think they're going to offset nothing. No, you're not. Especially Yasharala. Only one way to make it through this, and that's through your Howard Bashim, your Howard Shah. Riches ain't gonna profit, man. They say, really, they say, if you got a lot of money, a lot of riches, you better start buying it up and putting it into physical things like generators, uh, water filtration systems, um, get you some, uh, I say, ammunition, get uh, things you can trade. People are always gonna need coffee, you know, things of that nature. You better get you some uh, livestock, chickens, you know, some food. Get you a garden going. You better start doing that, man. Having like a hundred million dollars when they crash that dollar, that's just what pounds and pounds of, of paper. <laughs> it's gonna do you no good. You're gonna see people, man. They're gonna do like that. Uh, what's that? Bed Bath and Beyond CEO. They're gonna swan dive out the building when they find that their money's been reduced to nothing. When they go to the bank and the bank like, man, I ain't got nothing for you. You know, <laughs> we got a new system. And then see, this is why they're setting up. That Revelation 13 and 16, y'all, Shirala. Because then they're going to do this. And a lot of people are going to take it. They're going to say, okay, we don't have any cash for you. But we have this new thing. Now, you just take this small procedure and get this thing inserted in your body. Then you'll have, you know, some resources to spend. And that's how they're going to hook them, y'all, Shirala. The cra All this is like a controlled collapse. He's already got the... The digital system already set up. He's going to crash the physical system. When the people panic. Because oh, oh, they don't fear you how about you was shy. They, they fear like not having no money. They fear Esau. Things of that nature. Then Esau going to tell them. I got. I got the. the they going to come in like a savior. I got it. I got you. Just put this device in your body. And then you can go ahead. You know. And, and get your funds. That's how they going to do it. Y'all try. They forced. It's like they try to force you to mess with the bank. You got to get a checking account to even get paid from your job. They're going to try to force you to, to access this new digital money that's about to come. They're going to crash the physical money. And you're going to go to a digital money. And that's when that device going to come in. You know, Revelation 13 and 16. That's when that's going to come in. And it, it is right here at the door, man. They already got the legislation set up. The system's already set up. The payment system is set up. The biometric system is already set up. They just looking at the perfect day to crash the dollar. So with that, you know, giving you advance warning to avoid the BS and get ready now. Act, I, I'll be acting like the dollar going to crash tomorrow. You know, that'd be my mindset. Like, you know, it crashing. That's why I don't let the bank hold my money. I, I always got like, I already started seeing see the bank in the shady business practice. Like, I might let them have like a hundred or two. A hundred just to buy some online or something. But as far as like, if I, if I got like a couple thousand, that's not going in the bank. No, no, no. I'm going to hold that. I hold the majority of my money. Y'all can hold a little bit. Because at any time, they got a thing called bank holiday to where the banks just belly up and they psh, ain't no money. You know, you just, hey, <laughs> sorry for you. <laughs> you know, shouldn't have gave us the money. And then they, psh, and Babylon ain't going to take that, man. They're going to go get them swords. But you already know the modern day sword is. We don't. That's a gun. They gonna go in just like that woman did. Go off in that bank like, hey man, you better give it up. So look for that to happen more frequently over in Babylon the Great as these economic times get worse and we get closer to Esau 
delete Edomites crashing the dollar and going into and transitioning to a digital dollar, a digital system when the 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 MOTBZ will be enacted. That's on the books. It's about to happen. So with that, man, I hope this has been edifying. I want to say Kwan Yashar Allah, DTF Baba Bob, Shalom.